Hey guys, what's up and welcome to the Phil Studio, your favorite bench on the internet. Today is a great day because we're going to attempt to repair a duet sound card made by Apogee, uh, which is a sound card for Mac. Uh, first, we're just going to do some basic tests. I think the unit is dead, so I'm going to show you as well how to open this because it's pretty tricky. And there's no information on the net, so let's go, enjoy! The problem with this unit is uh, it won't power up when you plug it into the USB. So, I was curious and decided to try the barrel connector uh, with 5 volt. Make sure it's 5 volt, please. You don't want to break that sound card. It's a nice one. Um, uh, so, I just plug my power supply into this, power it up to see if it uh, if it will power. And the how do you know that uh, the center the center pin is the positive? It's not always like that by default. So never take in account that the center the center pin is the is the positive. And what you could do, well, you will probe uh, the center pin. And try to probe like on the casing to see if it's the negative or the ground. And in our case, you see, I'm measuring a little resistance. This could be the protection circuit, a diode, uh, a capacitor. So this means that the external part is the ground and you can just touch like the casing of the USB plug so you know that the external part is the negative make sure you have 5 volt DC when you plug this in and let's go part up so we see the A the logo appears, uh, which is a really good sign because the machine is not completely destroyed, though something is messed up on the part on the side of the USB power up. Uh, so, like, how do you open that without like destroying the casing? It's tempting to just pry, use force and destroy the casing but like I said every manufacturer is hiding something behind their logo and their goddamn stickers so here you have access to four screws you can unscrew this right away so you remove the back panel and wow, you have access to everything here. Uh, that's a complex circuit and a nice layout. So you would be tempted to like to remove this board, but it's it's stuck here with the the jack connector, which is the headphone connector, and also these little connector here are stuck. So what do you do? Well, this knob here is not supposed to be glued, so could be easily removed with two small flathead screwdriver, one on each side, and you gently pry. Like, be really careful because you're using like the the whole screen here. Uh, I think it was enough to just remove it. And then you have this little nut that retains the encoder. Yes, it's an encoder because it's uh, it's turning infinitely. And there's a push button also. So once this is clean up, you can just gently slide it down. Move it up, 
Move it and be careful because why? There's a small ribbon cable connected here. So how do you do? There are two clips on the side of the connector. Pull them up. You should hear a little click. Use your nail or a small screwdriver and then you should be able to slide the ribbon cable the cable out really easily okay so what do we have here okay so we have the usb here and the barrel connector here so where do we start like check the soldering they look fine but i think I'm going to redo a little job there and here it looks like something blew up this small operational amplifier but we cannot be sure that's really weird maybe it's just Hard to tell. Hmm. This one is suspicious. If we have something to do in there, this is definitely something that is suspicious. Uh, I know you cannot see really well because it's not a microscope, but there's one of the operational amplifier with a little hole and it's on the side of the USB plug, so could be a problem. So it's not really easy to repair just like that. Looking at the looking at the circuit, even it's worse when you don't have the schematic. So I'm just gonna do some analysis, take some measurement, and I'm gonna come back later with a diagnosis. So after some analysis, I was right. Uh, this I see seems like it just exploded so the silicone casing is just burned and when you look with the magnifying with the magnifying glasses like a little bit at an angle you can definitely see uh, it was puncture from the inside like the smoke probably goes out uh, so can tell you this is a I'm not sure what this is this part is but it's a 2115A gonna check that on the internet so this makes perfect sense uh, I just found the TPS 2115A online according to the data sheet it's a auto switching power mux it's in the family of the multiplexers and it's supposed to enable seamless transition between two types of power supply, such as a battery and a wall adapter. In our case, it's a wall adapter and a USB cable. Uh, my guess, like something could have happened, the USB cable was plugged and uh, someone just plugged the power supply and just displugged it and there was a short somewhere. And this could have burned uh, this small auto-switching IC. So I'm going to order it, replace it, close back the machine, test it again. To continue, I hope you enjoyed watching this and now you feel a little bit more confident on how to open this nice sound card. See you soon.